White Castle restaurants are in the 100th year of existence. The true godfather in this business, and so they should be. Much of what you know today stems from White Castle. You see all those people in a military style formation, working along a production line, each with a particular role? White Castle. A uniform approach to everything from food to uniforms? Yeah, White Castle. You're welcome. From the outside looking in, there is a little bit of an aura about White Castle. If you're in Europe, there are plenty of castles. Very old and magnificent to look at. But if you roll up to one at two in the morning, hungry, you're getting nothing. Trust me. Perhaps it is scarcity that gives them a mystique. Even if you live in the United States, they are relatively rare in comparison to other chain restaurants. Half their age. Never underestimate the allure of wanting something you can't have, I suppose. Imagine the corporate departments of another old chain of fast food restaurants reading a film script that centred on the partnership of drug use and their brand and going, yep, we're in, which is exactly what they did. They went in lock, stock and barrel on Harold and Kumar Go to White Castle, a film about two stoners in search of White Castle burgers. And it was a good decision that added to the cult status of White Castle among the targeted market, the young late night crowd. I'm not sure the munchies were a thing in 1921, when White Castle first opened, hence all the serious faces. Walter Anderson, a cook from Wichita, Kansas, had began experimenting with a little burger shack where burgers were made in front of customers. Anderson soon partnered with businessman Billy Ingram, and the two of them began opening White Castle restaurants that specialised in burgers and followed a standardised approach to everything. This was becoming popular with big chain stores and national brands. This was especially needed as customers wanted reassurance that what they were buying was of quality. The burger at the time was seen as food for the poor, and what's more, ground beef had had a bad rap. People had suspicions that mystery chemicals and putrid meats were involved in ground beef. This fella didn't help much. Upton Sinclair, his 1906 book The Jungle, was an expose of the meatpacking industry and was a bestseller. In a nutshell, working in a meatpacking plant in the early 1900s was no picnic, and with tales of people falling into rendering tanks and being ground into mincemeat, people were not surprisingly not keen on the idea of a burger. So White Castle had their work cut out trying to convince a reluctant public to embrace the burger. This new restaurant brand needed a strong image and a catchy slogan. Could have gone for something like, a burger so good, you give an arm or a leg, but wisely, they went for buy and by the sack. To combat the reputation of the meat industry, one of the main focuses from the very beginning was cleanliness, and this applied to everything. The restaurant presentation needed to be sterile and clean at all times. This is where the white part of White Castle comes in. A lot of white and stainless steel is a theme in their restaurants. The staff had to have uniforms that were clean and pressed and individual staff members were held to strict standards of personal hygiene. White Castle was all in on cleanliness. Billy Ingram even went as far as commissioning medical studies to prove the nutritional value of their burgers. And it worked. Before long, White Castle had opened a number of restaurants in and around Wichita and the Kansas area. Distinctive looking restaurants that were mini White Castles were instantly recognisable. Each location selling a standardised menu brought a familiarity to the chain at a time when that was lacking in restaurants. The early service standards were also a selling point. White Castle employees would bring your order to your car. In fact, in 1927, Billy Ingram created the idea of the carry-out order, which was a new concept and coined the slogan, sell them by the sack. Customers were happy and they kept coming back, and the staff were also happy. White Castle went a long way to make sure morale was high. This included good pay, bonuses, and benefits, which kept the turnover of staff down. In 1933, Ingram bought out Anderson and Billy Ingram set out on his own. In another first, which seems obvious in modern times, happened when Ingram placed coupons in local newspapers, offering five burgers for only 10 cents. This was a huge success and created a line around the block and encouraged people that were not customers already to come and give White Castle a try. Ingram set his sights on the middle class, and in particular housewives. A lot of his approach centred around using science and research to convince housewives that burgers were healthy and safe, and encouraged samples to make the point. When the Great Depression kicked in, White Castle were actually in a better place than most, as the value and low cost meant they were in a good position relatively speaking. World War II, however, was a kick in the nuts. Before the war, White Castle hired only men, and therefore lost a large amount of their workforce to the war effort. And so with this, women were given the chance to join the team. Another wartime issue that was causing a problem was rationing. Items such as sugar, coffee, meat and onions were restricted, and this rationing was passed on to the customer. The profits were hit as a result, and many restaurants were closed. The Nickel Burger was now a dime burger, thanks to the price rise of beef. After the war, there was a big change not only in American life, but also the fast food market. The competition was hotting up. McDonald's, Burger King, Steak and Shake, and many others were on the march, and they believed in a system that White Castle did not. Franchising. As a result, there was an explosion of burger chains across the country. White Castle stuck to their guns and kept everything in-house. How does White Castle stand out? Apart from turning their restaurants into extravagant castles, they needed more, or in this case, more is less. Each square patty had five holes removed so that they would, quote, cook faster and add more flavour. This may well be true, but I'm sure it keeps the cost of each patty down as well. You can thank Earl Howell, a White Castle operator from Cincinnati for this little drop of genius. More flavour. 
The holes do actually make the product stand out, and it is a signature of White Castle, so much so that the company secured a patent for it, which is why others have not followed along. The slider is the selling point. You know what you are going for when you decide to go to White Castle, more so than perhaps other restaurants. And walking out with a briefcase of burgers is still a novel in fast food despite the company launching the Crave case nearly 20 years ago. White Castle also seems to benefit from the various food challenges that you see on YouTube. The Crave Case Challenge looks popular, where if you have a spare 5 minutes, you can watch a human being consume 30 White Castle sliders in one sitting. That's the internet for you. To be able to deliver 30 or even 100 burgers in one go takes a wonder of fast food operation that White Castle were pioneers at. The production line is something akin to a factory production line. Square beef patties, that's so there is no room wasted on the grill. The burger patties are cooked on a bed of onions and actually steam rather than cooking directly on the grill. Again, making them different. The whole process is efficient and allows White Castle to cook 30 sliders on each grill at a time. White Castle made their move in 1987 to sell their sliders in retail locations, which is a way of proliferating the brand that might otherwise have come from franchising. This is a major driver in sales for the company. In fact, growth of the retail sector rose 23% in 2018 and contributed to an overall increase in sales of 1.8% in the same year. It's not just little burgers, of course. If you slide down to a White Castle in the morning, you can go full Belgian and order a waffle slider. This is probably not as familiar as the rest of the menu, but you need to be able to offer something for all occasions throughout the day. The one thing that is curious, knowing how much retail sales boost the overall revenue for White Castle, is why other similar brands don't have the same impact on supermarket shelves. It could be that White Castle, the brand, is just so much bigger than the restaurant reach that people are more willing to buy the frozen products because they are accessible where visiting the restaurant is not possible. Also, this works well for White Castle themselves, if they don't intend on being dotted around all over the place. If you are selling franchise locations, the buyers of the franchises want a level of exclusivity. That's a big part of what they are buying. You wouldn't want to put a large chunk of change into a franchise if people could buy your product in the frozen aisle of the supermarket around the corner. Getting in on the delivery side of things is an area White Castle is hoping will return additional sales, another level of convenience. Thanks to partnerships with Grubhub, DoorDash, Uber Eats and Postmates, you now only need to open your front door and then raise the delivered burger to your mouth. One area that White Castle has a good history in is innovation. They pretty much started this burger business after all. But a company with so much history, you think would be cautious and perhaps traditional. But White Castle claimed to be the first quick service restaurant to have a website after launching Whitecastle.com in 1996. They were taking online orders back in 2012. They were the first with the old coupons and the newspaper trick. And 41 years after opening, they added cheese to a burger. Okay, this last one goes against my point, but jump to 2020 and White Castle are greasing up a burger making robot. Partnering with Miso Robotics, the company that previously built the robot Flippy that was trialled in Cali Burger restaurants. A new version of Flippy called Flippy Raw, I'm thinking steamy might be more appropriate, will be trialled in White Castle restaurants. This is apparently to reduce human contact with food during the cooking process. It will be interesting to see where automation works in this kind of environment and where it doesn't for now. Flippy's pilot test has seen the robot average 360 baskets of fried food per day and has so far cooked nearly 15,000 pounds of food. So who's behind these futuristic changes? The Queen of the Castle, or President Stroke CEO, Lisa Ingram, is the great-granddaughter of the original founder, Billy Ingram, and daughter of Bill Ingram III, who had been the CEO after taking over from his father, Bill Ingram II, Lisa Ingram's grandfather. This is a real family business, even after all these years, and something that not many have the honour of claiming. There must have been countless checks offered over the years by people wanting to take Wirecastle global and franchise it to world domination, putting sliders on every corner of every street on the planet. Wirecastle, under the leadership of Lisa Ingram, is looking at ways to keep an old institution relevant in the fast-changing world of today. Will Wirecastle start franchising? The company line for now is no. However, White Castle have licensed restaurants overseas, and more recently in Arizona and Las Vegas. There are four locations now in Las Vegas, including one on the Las Vegas Strip. This is an exception, but if the partnership is successful, then the temptation might be there to, to go more down this path. The company is around 400 restaurants. that have been in a constant state of fluctuation for the last 100 years. McDonald's, for example, started franchising over 30 years after the first White Castle restaurant opened, and now has over 30,000 locations worldwide. White Castle in a hundred years time, an AI robot slowly massages your shoulders and tells you how proud they are with you while you munch your way through a case of 30 White Castle sliders that you're eating as a challenge for people on the internet. Embracing new ideas like automation to make the kitchen process more efficient and financially viable for the future. Expanding rapidly all over the place is a good way of temporarily painting over the cracks. But if you don't stick to your core principles, the house often comes crashing down eventually. 
You see, a castle isn't a structure of expansion, but one of fortification. Permanent stones are lost through the ages, and castles are built by those that believe they have something worth defending. All Things White Castle. Let me know. Thanks for watching.